In this third part of the .NET 5 REST API tutorial, we learn about the dependency injection technique and how to leverage it to properly inject a repository instance to the items controller. We also introduce the concept of data transfer objects and how to use them to establish a clear contract with our API consumers. Today you will learn what is dependency injection, how to register and inject dependencies in .NET 5, how to implement data transfer objects, also known as DTOs, and how to map entities to DTOs. In a previous video, we were able to actually uh, create uh, our entities, repositories, and even a controller uh, to be able to get uh, items and, and our specific item. However, we found an issue where we're trying to retrieve one item. We can't retrieve it because as we found, and just go back to the code, um, uh, anytime we uh, receive a request in our items controller, we're creating a new instance of a repository and that's bringing a, a bunch of uh, new items uh, in such a way that we are never able to, to find it, right? So how can we go around it? I mean, how can we actually fix this uh, the right way? Uh, so for this, uh, there's a, a pretty important concept that we need to learn here and um, which is called dependency injection. So let's talk about that. So what is dependency injection? Let's think about uh, our class, right? So we have a class uh, which wants to make use of uh, some other class. When we have this kind of relationship, uh, we say that this other class is a dependency of uh, our class, right? And um, in more concrete terms, in our case, uh, we have the items controller, which in its constructor is uh, creating a new instance of uh, the repository, right? The InMem uh, items repository. Now, what we really want to do in terms of dependency injection is flip things a little bit. And instead of have items controller construct that instance, uh, and I'll just uh, open up my highlighter here, um, uh, we will receive the repository in the constructor and then just take that, that, uh, that reference uh, into the class. So at this point, we are uh, injecting the repository dependency into the items controller class. Now, this is also uh, brings in something uh, very important, which is the dependency inversion principle, in which, uh, again, so we have a class and we have some dependency, let's call it dependency A, and well, this class depends on dependency A. But uh, what we want to do is just not take that kind of uh, dependency and instead, uh, have our uh, our class uh, depend on a, an abstraction, which is uh, in this case in, in C sharp, it is an interface, right? So the class no longer depends uh, on dependency A, it just depends on some interface that dependency A will implement, right? So we have inverted the dependency by having a, a class only depend on an interface and dependency A implement that interface. And the same way, uh, I mean, as we do that, uh, we could bring in uh, dependency V or any other dependencies that also implement interface. But in this case, you can imagine now the repository that uh, items controller receive is just an interface. So class in this case has no idea of which explicit dependency it is working with could be A, B, or any other dependency. As long as they implement the contract, which in this case is the interface, this abstraction, uh, class is very happy to work with it. Okay, so that's, that is the dependency inversion principle. And uh, well, the thing is, okay, so why, why do we want to do this? Well, really a couple of reasons. Uh, and yeah, like I said, like it says right there, so by having our code dependent, dependent upon abstractions, we're decoupling implementations uh, from each other. So it gives us much more uh, freedom in terms of moving around these dependencies without ever having to touch our class. And uh, this makes the code cleaner, easier to modify, and much easier to reuse. Um, but if, and by the way, it's also much easier to, to test. But then if you're going to do this, uh, how are we going to construct these dependencies, right? Because now we're just receiving them in the constructor. So if we have uh, all these dependencies, dependency A, B, C, uh, how are we going to construct, her, construct them? So because uh, our class wants to receive them, right? We're going to inject them there. So comes uh, into play this thing called a uh, service container, which in terms of uh, .NET 5 uh, is um, uh, an ICE service provider. So, and what happens is that uh, during uh, application, the application startup, we're going to register uh, each of these uh, dependencies 
are going to be registered into the service container. And then uh, eventually when the class gets uh, instantiated, the, the service uh, iService provider, the service container is going to take care of uh, resolving uh, any of the dependencies needed by this class, like it has a map of all the dependencies that are needed by each of our classes. So it resolves the dependencies, constructs them if needed, uh, only the first time, of course. Uh, and depending, well, actually depending on the application lifecycle that has been set up for those uh, dependencies and uh, for the class. Uh, so if needed, constructs it, otherwise it will reuse it, and then it ejects the dependencies. And uh, this is, in fact, what's going to help us uh, with the little problem that we have right now in the in our project, where we don't want to be constructor, uh, constructing, I mean, we don't want to get explicit dependency on the repository, and we don't want a construction, explicit construction of one instance every time we create the, the controller. We just want to receive an instance if it's available, and only construct it, get it, it constructed first time, and get it constructed by the service container. Let's see now how we can use dependency injection to our advantage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back to Visual Studio Code. So let's stop debugging, close terminal. And so let's fix this situation where we have this explicit dependency on in mem item repository. So the first thing we're going to need is some interface so that items controller uh, does not really uh, operate on concrete instances of the repository. So let's go to uh, in mem item repository. And what we're going to do is just Right click on the class and um, actually in the light bulb and let's extract interface. So that's going to create uh, the interface for us and makes uh, in main item repository implement that interface. Now we probably want to take that interface out into its own file. So let's do that. A new file. And let's actually call it. Uh, I items repository it should be a better name for this. Okay, and so namespace uh, catalog that repositories, and here's where we're going to bring in our interface. I'm going to just cut and paste here. There it is. Need to import a couple of namespaces. Let's see for the entities. Force is for good, uh, collections generic, that should do it. All right, so we have our interface and uh, here's the repository. Repository implements the interface. And now that we have the interface, let's go back to our controller and uh, uh, let's switch this into, uh, I mean, this, this type into I uh, items repository. Oh, what is it? I items repository. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure this is. Oh, yeah, we have to do the right naming here. Sorry for that. Okay. And uh, now we're going to receive it here. So I items repository. Uh, this is the repository. And then, uh, just to not confuse uh, things, let's say this that repository equals repository. All right. So yeah. So now we got the pens injection working here, and uh, no longer this class has any idea of which repository uh, is going to be used behind the scenes. Now uh, the other thing we have to do here is to uh, oh, what's going on here? Actually, I item repository just fixing that in our repository. The other thing is that we have to do the registration, right? So to do the re registration of uh, our repository, what we're going to do is just go to startup, configure services. So this is the place where you register all these services that are going to be used across your service. And the service that we need now is our repository. So let's do services dot Add singleton. Now there's a bunch of ways uh, to add uh, your uh, to register your services here. I'm going to be using a singleton. So and a singleton is nothing o nothing else other than just having one copy uh, of of the instance of a type across the entire lifetime of our service. So only one will be created and uh, it will be reused whenever whenever it's needed. So that's going to help us resolve the problem that we have today. And so to add a singleton, first we specify the interface. So 
I add a repository which we may need to add uh, yes we need namespace and then so that's an interface and then the concrete instance is uh, in mem items repository right and that's it so that's how you register uh, your dependency and so at this point we should be ready to should be ready to go so I'll do f5 and now I'll switch to swagger uh, so we have uh, the same uh, APIs as before I'll refresh anyways and then let's try an exercise now so let's see I'll try out our items uh, endpoint so I'll get one of our items and I should be able to find it now so I'll see uh, items ID try it out I'll put the ID here and then let's try to find it execute still have a breakpoint here let's see yes so this time we can resolve it no more null remove the breakpoint run back to swagger and then here it is we got a response code 200 for the request of that item and here's all the body uh, the description of that item so uh, as expected uh, now we only have one copy of repository hanging around which is injected into the controller and that allows us to actually find uh, the item we we're looking for now there's one more thing to notice here that we should fix uh, as, uh, right away and which is the fact that uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, routes that we have enabled right now are uh, enabling uh, or are exposing our item entity directly to the outside and we have to understand that as we build a REST API we're also establishing a contract with any of uh, the clients that we're going to be using which is a contract that we should not be breaking easily and the problem that we have right now is that since we're exposing item which is the item that we are using for dealing with persistence with, with the repository uh, anytime we want to add fill I mean anytime we want to modify or remove uh, any of the fields that we are that we're using in our in a storage right now in the repository uh, we can potentially break our clients right break that contract which is a really no go uh, for uh, as you build these rest services so how can we avoid exposing this uh, item contract there so let's let's take a look let's go back to the project let's actually find that entity so we have item here and as we said we are returning it both in get items and in get item so what we're going to do now is introduce what we call a, a DTO or a data transfer object so a data transfer object is nothing else other than the uh, the actual contract that's going to be enabled uh, between the client and our service and to do that we're going to do introduce a new folder here let's call it uh, DTOs and let's add a new file for our uh, item DTO right item DTO so again uh, namespace catalog in this case it's going to be DTOs and the item DTO is going to be fairly similar to our uh, item actually so let's uh, I'm going to just copy the the item and so I'm going to add missing nine spaces here and there yep and uh, yeah I mean in this case it happens to be that the item that we want to return uh, in our methods is pretty much the same as the item that we're going to be storing in, in the repository uh, or retrieving from the repository and so which is okay uh, seems a bit redundant right now but the benefits uh, become evident as you move forward uh, as you start modifying your database uh, you don't have to be touching this contract uh, or you can be very careful with the contract as opposed to be breaking our clients uh, anytime so this gives you a lot of flexibility as you evolve uh, your uh, data store so now that we have uh, actually let's rename this to item DTO sorry for that okay item DTO and now that we have that uh, it is time to start uh, using it right so let's go back to items controller and so at this time what we'll need to do is uh, to convert the items that we're getting let's starting with get items right we have to convert this in from item into item DTO so one way to do this would be to just do a simple projection uh, with link so we would do uh, select and then yeah I may be missing the link namespace here to add it 
I'm going to say, okay, so item project into a new item DTO. And I may need to add any space here. There it is. And so here we're going to bring in the, the properties, right? So I'm going to say, all right, so ID is equals item dot ID name equals item name, same thing, price, create date. Okay, so now we have uh, our items collection is actually a, a collection of item DTO. I think we're missing a parenthesis here. And we return uh, those items, no longer item, it has to be item DTO, setting up the contract. Okay, so yeah, so that should do it. We have transformed the item into item DTO. And as you may guess, we have to do pretty much the same thing over here, right? Uh, but at this point, it, that, that will be a bit redundant, right? So why would we want to do this transformation twice with exactly the same properties? So one way that we can uh, overcome this is by adding a, an extension method. Uh, so let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to add a new file here. I'm going to call it extensions. Okay, so catalog. And then uh, what extension does, extension method does is it just really extends the definition of a uh, one uh, type by adding uh, some uh, method that can be executed on that type. So in this case, we're going to uh, add a class public static class. So for extension methods, you have to use a static class. That's the way to go. Uh, extensions. And then we're going to declare one method here. Public static It's going to return item DTO and it, we're going to call it as DTO and what is going to it's going to operate on uh, the current item that's, that's what this method means so again let's add some namespaces here um, there it is so this method receives an item right and um, by by using this here it means the current item uh, can have a method called as DTO that returns its uh, item DTO version so at this point, we can probably uh, take advantage of what we did here. So let's see, this is what we used to create item DTO. So we can say, well, return new item DTO out of the item that we received. So there it is, we have an extension method ready to be used. So now when we go to items controller, what we can do is instead of all of this, we can say, so item is projected into item dot as DTO, and that's all it is. Let's collapse this a bit. And with that, we can also use the same method over here. So when we get the item, we also say as DTO. Of course, we need to change this into our DTO contract. And then the rest, actually, I would do this. So let's just get the item first, check if it is new. And if it's not, then we do the as DTO. Okay, so now that we have done that, uh, let's see how that goes. So I'll do a five again. Okay, back to Swagger. And I'm going to refresh this and let's see if this still works. So items, I'm going to try it out, execute. And yeah, just like before, we can get the list of items. But this time, if you scroll down, you'll see that the schemas, the contract that we're exposing to our consumers is no longer item, but it is item DTO with the properties exposed right here. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I think we covered enough. And uh, in the next video, we're going to be implementing the remaining uh, uh, the remaining uh, verbs. So we're going to be implementing uh, post, put, uh, and uh, delete. And so, uh, yeah, so I hope this was useful uh, as always. Uh, if you like it, uh, please consider hitting that like button and consider also subscribing so that you can get uh, updates on my new videos as soon as they go out. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.